So as soon as the NDA was lifted on the RX 480, your inbox was likely flooded with reviews, benchmarks, and analysis of the RX 480, and it's showing the performance to be around 4% faster than a reference GTX 970, although when the 970 is overclocked, being that this Maxwell card overclocks pretty well, it's actually beating the RX 480 by about 7%. Now this doesn't tell the whole story because it looks like AMD may have actually nerfed their RX 480 reference editions being that they only have a six pin power connector and that seems to be the limitation on these cards because most reviewers aren't able to get much of an overclock at all on the RX 480s around 5% which is a little disappointing if you picked up a reference RX 480. So beyond the benchmarks with the RX line from AMD there's an even bigger story to be told that you can check out on my channel with my Four Horsemen of AMD video. But the more pressing and immediate issue is concerns that have been raised over the PCIe power draw issue. Drawing more from the PCIe slot at peak moments than the six pin power connector. This is a pretty serious issue because if you're using an older or cheaper motherboard, it could degrade your motherboard over time and you could experience shutdowns at those peak moments. So almost everyone is fine with, with a decent motherboard. Although given that the RX 480 is aimed at being very budget friendly, it could be an issue for someone that has a very budget-oriented, cheaper, older motherboard. So a little analysis into the overclocking results of the RX 480, it is showing that the bottleneck is from the power limit. Because if you push the power limit higher in the Wattman software, you get better results. This is on findings of an overclocked RX 480 versus a stock RX 480 over at OC3DTV. He was getting the same performance unless he moved the power target higher. And that's through the new overclocking utility from AMD called Wattman derived from Watt Manager that's built right into the driver. And the UI is actually pretty in depth. You can look at peak GPU performance, a live look at GPU activity, memory, temperature, fan speeds, averages, and also a look at the history. So as soon as I can get my hands on an add-in board partner RX 480, I'm definitely gonna be able to give you guys some in-depth analysis through this utility. When moving that power target, the power to performance ratio doesn't scale very well given that thermals become a concern and these cards can throttle very easily with the blower style cooling. But that said, in the coming weeks with add-in board partner cards being released with an open air design, and hopefully an upgrade from the six pin power connector to six pins or six and eight pin, we could see a huge difference. So that really makes you ask the question, why didn't AMD just put an eight pin power connector on these cards if this six pin is really nerfing these cards? And hopefully with two power connectors, you'll see much better overclocks. Although it has been a little disappointing from the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080, the results we've been seeing so far, even with really good cooling and added power connectors, the overclocks on these cards still is maxing out around 21 megahertz through the GPU 3.0 boost. So time will tell, but I'm still pretty hopeful on the hardware side from the RX 480, and that's only half the story. Then you have to consider we the software side of the equation. Gaming APIs. We have invested in Mantle, which inspired DirectX 12 which gave birth to Vulcan. And we also made a revolutionary initiative. But the real GPU. value of these cards comes after the hardware, after the increase of Radeon install base by having the proper driver support and optimization. As an analogy, the experience per dollar you get out of say, a PC that has the same specifications of a console, so say same CPU, same GPU, with a console you're gonna get a better user experience because of the advantage they have on the software side of the equation. However, with the aim of closing this gap by utilizing the same innovations to really extract 100% of the performance out of your hardware, PC gaming is looking to be more and more compelling than ever every day. And with a huge increase in Radeon install user base, it's definitely gonna be getting developers attention and definitely gonna be putting it on the priority for development and optimization. And if a multi-GPU Crossfire setup can reap some of these benefits with AMD putting more emphasis on optimizing Crossfire and improving the scaling, AMD's vice president compared the future of Crossfire to the time of the move into to a multi-core realm of CPUs. So that's very promising. This inflection point is upon us right now with APIs accepting multi-GPU setups as a priority. So it's becoming much more than just a lofty 3D mark score that you can bang on your chest, but actually getting a lot of application out of a Crossfire setup. The embracing of multi-GPU setups makes a lot of sense. So we could definitely see a trend in this direction with the promise of DirectX 12 with scaling and optimization really starting to deliver. Moreover, on the hardware level with the technology moving to 14 nanometer, two chips in synergy performance per dollar is much greater than that of a single die. 
So if AMD and developers put a lot of emphasis on improving the scaling of Crossfire, this could become the norm and really could make a very good analogy to multi-core CPUs of the past. All right, guys, well, that concludes this video with my before you buy an RX 480. I really hope you liked it. Please leave a comment down below if you think this is the best we're gonna see out of the RX 480 and we're gonna be limited by the silicone and adding power connectors is not gonna help us. Or if you're waiting to buy an add-in board partner card with the extra power connectors, it's really gonna hopefully push these cards to the forefront, only showing us the tip of the iceberg of the performance of the RX line. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel, Awe of Tech. I'll catch you guys in the next video.